gearbox you probably already know about is the parallel axis drive. It's basically any two gears put together, and it's a great way to get a low ratio like 2 to 1. You can actually use it to get any ratio, but if that gets too high, things can get kind of silly. Better to use something called a worm gear. Not exactly what it sounds like, it's kind of like a screw with a big thread. One full turn of the worm only advances the gear by one tooth, so you get a ratio exactly equal to the number of teeth. That's pretty good, but it burns up a lot of energy, the axes are perpendicular, not parallel, and some things just don't work so well at a right angle. So a worm is kind of like a gear with one tooth. Something that works kind of the same is two gears that differ by one tooth. Add an eccentric shaft and bearing, and it only advances one tooth every time the shaft goes round. Well, it does in theory if the teeth at the bottom didn't hit. Take one away. Eh, not quite. Let's do one more. Mm, last one. Oh, well, now it should work, but there is a four tooth difference so the ratio isn't so high anymore. So to make this useful, you need a lot of teeth in the ring, or you have to make the teeth smaller and mess with the shape a little to get the extra clearance. It's called a cycloid, and the main problem is the gear wobbles, so you can't use it as an output. But if you add three pins in a circle, and a plate with eccentric joints, you do get a stable output shaft. Only other problem with a wobbling gear is it also causes vibration. Same kind of thing is used in your cell phone, so it takes some work to smooth that out. Now a strain wave is another kind of drive with a flexible gear that's stretched oval and squeezed into a ring. It doesn't vibrate and there's no backlash, but you do need a two-tooth difference, otherwise this'll happen when what you need is for this to happen, and that cuts the ratio in half. Other thing is the parts are hard to make, and you know what that means. It's possible to make a planetary gear high ratio too. Start with a sun, and turn the ring gear into a pinion. That lets you have that magical one tooth difference, and use planets that span the two. Of course it doesn't really work when the two pinions aren't exactly the same size, so you need stepped planets. And as luck would have it, the step in the planets lowers the ratio, so you don't get the full benefit of that one tooth difference after all. You can do the same with an orbitless gear, but there's no ring, so it's the planet that needs the one tooth difference. To turn the low ratio into a high ratio, the gear engagement is reversed, and that just means adding an idler gear. Well that's easy as pie since the sun and planet are next to each other, and the idler doesn't affect the ratio so you can use whatever you want. And there you have it. Just like a worm, the sun advances one tooth every time the planets go around, but without all the friction. This is how it looks in action, a little easier to see without that carrier plate in the way. Sun has 15 teeth and the ratio is 15 to 1. This one moves in reverse, but a couple less planet teeth will change that. And another thing, step idler gears will actually increase the ratio, square it in fact. So with no more than 16 teeth, you can get over 200 to 1. Barely see the sun move at that ratio. It's like two worm gears in a row. To put it all in a nutshell, high ratio gears fall into two categories. The cycloid, strain wave, and planetary have overlapping gears, so mechanical interferences limit the ratios you can get. The worm and orbitless have adjacent gears, so there aren't any interference issues and that means higher ratios. What sets the orbitless apart is there's no reason at all to use anything but good old fashioned involute gear teeth, and they can be helical, herringbone, or whatever else rings your bell. Mm -hmm.